<laughs> Toby, look at the state of her. I know, I know. Have you been playing mud pies, Rosie? We went to the playground. Oh, that was a bit reckless. There's a right quagmire up there. She wanted to go on the swings. And we had a lovely time, didn't we, Rosie? Mm. Yes, we did. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. Did you have a nice swing? I thought Philip Moss was supposed to be sorting it, but there's nothing happening. Wow, that's the trouble with Christmas, isn't it? Everything grinds to a halt. No, mm. no, Rosie, he no. not that way. Hey, come on, come on. Come and say hello to the cows. Um, I just wanted to check what time you'll be back. Uh, in a couple of hours. I've got to straw down the barn yet. Why? Only I had a call from my mate, Cal. Oh, yes, Rosie, isn't she lovely? <laughs> um, can I make up a five-a-side team this yes, afternoon? She's one of so, my very favourite cows, this one. Someone's dropped out at the last minute. Uh, only it, it means being in Penny Hassett by half past two. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, um, <clears throat> and you did say Rex was coming over this afternoon. Uh, oh, um, so this is a ploy to get out of the house, is it? No, no, no. To avoid having to sit through another tedious argument about the rewilding project. Uh, although now you come to mention it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I'll be back by two, don't worry. Great. I'll tell Cal he can count on me. <laughs> right. Go on then, Rosie. Let's get you home. Yeah, and put her in the bath. Gavin, Philip's son, came over, which was nice. Mm. Him and his girlfriend are getting married. Oh, how lovely for you both, Kirsty. Yeah. Philip's chuffed to bits. We both are. Although they've got their hearts set on a pretty extravagant wedding. <laughs> oh, Lindy, you should see the price of it. Well, it's their choice, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Oh, I forgot to say, we went to see ghost stories in the attic. I thought you weren't keen. I wasn't, but Philip twisted my arm. I'm glad he did. So you enjoyed it? Oh, it was amazing. Ah. That attic is really spooky, isn't it? <laughs> oh, and that story, The Room in the Tower, it was absolutely the perfect setting. And Jim's performance, wow. Oh, I know. He's very good, isn't he? Well, I'm not easily scared, but I have to confess that it got me. Oh, and you must be very proud of Robert. Of Robert? Well, doing such a brilliant directing job. Oh, I, I don't think much was required in the way of direction. Well, I'm, I'm not denying that Jim's performance was great. He was, after all, merely sitting in a chair reading from a book. Well, yeah, I suppose. Although I have to confess, it's a pleasant change to hear praise for a director's contribution. In my experience, it's the actors that reap the plaudits for a successful show. But when it's a disaster, it's always the director's <laughs> fault. Uh, Linda? Oh, Roy, good hi afternoon. Oh, hiya. Um, what are you doing here? My job. Yeah, but isn't it supposed to be Ginny and Katerina on reception today? Oh, I swapped shifts with Ginny. She's apparently had a falling out with Katerina. You what? Oh, yeah. I heard they weren't speaking to each other. Well, why? Katerina accused her of cheating. Cheating? Mm. You are aware of what's going on in the staff room, aren't you? Oh, you mean the card games? Mm. Well, they're not playing happy families, Roy. Yeah, I know that. And I know there's been a bit of money changing hands. And I've issued warnings to a couple of people openly flouting company policy. But I thought it was just the kitchen, lads. Oh, it's not, Roy. Everyone's playing for money these days. Everyone? Well, not literally, but a pretty broad cross-section. Mm, including Ginny and Katerina. Oh, no. What am I supposed to do? It'll just end up with Oliver banning all card games again. It didn't work last time, did it? It certainly did not. Well, well um, let's just get through the new year, shall we, and I'll deal with it when the holiday's over. Oh, Roy. Uh, yeah, what? Well, you don't have time for a chat, do you? Um, not now, Kirsty. Uh, catch me later. Pip's not back yet. Oh. Oh, she did say two o'clock. Yeah, that's what she told me. I've got to go out in a minute. Oh, OK, if I wait? Yeah, yeah, of course. Come on in. Have a seat. Oh, and tell me, Rex, did the police get in touch again? Uh, yeah, yeah, they did. And? Oh, it was fine. Did you do what Josh asked you to do? Well, if you mean, did I forge a receipt for the digger that was used in the ram raid? No, I didn't. Why not? I decided it was a bad idea. You're painfully moral sometimes, Rex. <laughs> it's the kind of thing people do all the time. Yeah, people like you, maybe. I wouldn't think twice about it. Yeah, and I know from experience that anything you think's a good idea will turn out to be a recipe for disaster. Oh, thanks very much. And, and if the police start poking around in Josh's business, I seriously do not want to be implicated. <sighs> but if the business goes under, you will end up losing a sizeable chunk of your income. Mm, a relatively minor chunk. Yeah? And forging a document is... Well, well, it's fraud. And I'm simply not prepared to put my neck on the line like that for Josh. No, he's not going to be pleased. Well, tough. No, but anyway, it didn't matter. Police didn't request any documentation or anything. Just asked a few general questions about the digger. Hmm. 
Uh, Josh is due back next week anyway, so he can sort it out. Oh, Rex, you're here already. Hmm. Well, I'm not late, am I? Uh, no, no, I was early. Well, as much as I'd love to hear about rewilding for the hundredth time, I've got to run. Oh, is Rosie OK? Yeah, fed and watered and having a nap. Should be good for another oh, half hour. Um, her dirty clothes are in the machine and I've cleaned the mud off the buggy. Oh, oh I'm impressed. So you should be. Um, see you later. <laughs> Bye. Great. Uh, you really want to talk about rewilding? I had a rather pathetic voicemail from Phoebe and I, I don't know what to say to her. I know. I know she came to butter me up on Friday. Um, honestly, I'm fed up with the whole business. Oh, so... What, you don't want to talk about it? Oh, well, can I, can I at least get a sarni and a cup of tea first? I must say, I'm surprised at Katerina. I'd have thought she'd have known better. I'm surprised at Roy. He didn't seem to have a clue what's going on in the stuff room. Oh, well, I think since he caught a couple of chaps red-handed, the others have become more circumspect. Mm. You know, hiding the evidence under the table whenever management walks in. Oh, poor Roy. So he hasn't got enough to deal with. Mm, he's rather on edge at the moment, isn't he? Tell me about it. I've never seen it so busy here. Well, quite. I, for one, am very glad to see the end of my shift. <laughs> well, enjoy your swim. I shall. Oh, what happy New Year if I don't see you. Well, unfortunately, I expect you will. Oh? Rather against my better judgement, Robert and I will be attending the Bulls festivities. Oh, great! Of course, I prefer to be tucked up in bed well before midnight these days, <laughs> but Robert still gets excited by the idea of dressing up. So you're doing the full works, are you? I'm going as Mary Anning. Who? Oh, come on, Kirsty. You should know who Mary Anning is. Pioneering fossil hunter. Oh, yeah, of course. Yes. And how about you? Oh, a bit last minute, I'm afraid. Helen and I are going into Felpersham tomorrow to the fancy dress place, oh. so it really depends what they've got left. Oh, Kirsty. Oh, hi. Are uh, you in the middle of something? No, 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 it's all right. I was about to take the plunge. <laughs> See you Thursday. Yeah, bye, Linda. See you. Did you want something, Roy? Um, well, I thought you said you wanted a word. Oh, it's OK. It was nothing important, nothing to do with work. And you're obviously rushed off your feet. No, well, I can spare you ten minutes. Honestly, Roy, it doesn't matter. Are you sure? It can wait. No, no, come on. Um, let's go in the office. You can dump those things on the floor. Oh. Sorry, there's not really room for two people in here. Oh, oh. it's a relief to sit down for five minutes. <laughs> right, so, what's on your mind? Oh, it's nothing, really. Philip all right? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's OK. We had a really lovely Christmas. But? It's Gavin. You know, Philip's son. Yeah, Mr Tight Tipper. <laughs> yeah. Well, him and his girlfriend are getting married. OK. And that's a bad thing because? They want to do it on a beach in Bali. Sickening. Oh, Roy, I'm being serious. <sighs> Sorry, go on, go on, go on. Well, it's going to cost an arm and a leg. And Gavin's expecting Philip to pay for it. What, and Philip's refused? No, he wouldn't. Philip can't bear saying no to anyone, least of all Gavin. So, what's the problem? Well, don't you think it's a massive liberty? Asking your dad to fork out at least 20 grand. Uh, 20 grand? That's what it's going to cost. And Philip hasn't got that sort of money. Hasn't he? No. Well, I don't think so. I mean, I really don't know much about his finances... He spent half the weekend on his laptop trawling through various balance sheets, looking more and more tired and stressed. Oh. Have you talked to him about it? Yeah, but he won't admit there's a problem. Or that Gav might be overstepping the mark. I'm tempted to have a word with the guy myself. Oh, no, no, don't do that. Why not? You're... Well, you're technically his stepmother. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm barely older than he is. Yeah, like it or not, that's what you are to him, and stepmothers are always in the wrong, no matter how kind or well-meaning they are. I guess. See, look, Phoebe, come running to me. She's not my mum, <laughs> she can't tell me what to do, and I'd end up telling Haley to back off. But Gavin's not a child, he's a grown man. With a vastly overblown sense of entitlement. <laughs> I don't think it's even occurred to him that he might be upsetting his dad. Um, so you're going to tell him? You think it's a bad idea? Uh, believe me, Kirsty, involving yourself with other people's children is always a no-no. 
I get it, Rex. She went on and on at me on Friday. Well, Phoebe did. Yes, yeah, and I think she thought just because she'd got that last bit of land that I'd forgive her for the whole Biel fiasco. Well, it is good, though, isn't it? About the land. Oh, yeah, 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 it's brilliant. Oh. Um, but it doesn't change the fact that we're tied into that contract with Justin Elliott and his crowd. I know, I know. Which Phoebe didn't think to warn us about. It, it's just so insulting that she didn't trust us with all the information. Yeah, but... But using us as a greenwash was one thing, but... How could she not tell us that Justin's used the small print before to deliberately take control of other enterprises? It might not work out like that. Well, he could veto any of our decisions. But the reality is, Pip, that we don't know how having Beale on board will affect things until we start. Uh, if we ever start. Oh, I don't know, Rex. I, of course I want rewilding to succeed, but we just seem to lurch from one crisis to another. Uh, we've got to shut all that out and move on. Oh, no, yeah, I know, but... Well, after all the snide remarks about nepotism when we got the money and the weeks and months of failing to persuade anyone to part with a few measly acres of land. But we got there in the end. Well, look, Christmas has just been so nice. And not having to think about it. And just pottering around with the family, spending some proper time with Rosie. And, well, I can't help feeling... Do I really want to go back to all that hustle? But we've done the difficult bit. Oh, yeah, and you think it's all going to be plain sailing from now on? Well, it should be a bit more straightforward. We've got the money and we've got the land. I mean, how brilliant is that? Yeah, I suppose. Uh, I just feel, well... I'm not sure I'm quite ready to forgive Phoebe. <laughs> she's screwed up, Pip, and she's mortified. But she knows she's got to pick herself up and carry on. But I don't. Don't you think the three of us owe it to Peggy to make the scheme work? And personally, I wouldn't be able to look myself in the mirror if I walked away now. A beach in Bali? I know. So everyone invited us to fly halfway around the world? Yep. Right. Not what you'd call an environmentally friendly wedding, then. Oh, I had to bite my tongue over that. You'd have been proud of me, Helen. Oh, I'm sure you did very well. And, you know, it reminded me of when I was going to marry Tom. Why? How I got sucked into that whole thing, the whole sales pitch about this being the biggest day of your life, so everything's got to be perfect, no expense spared. Oh, it sickens me thinking of the money that got wasted. And did you say that to Philip? Oh, of course not. I subtly tried to suggest that Gavin and Kelly might scale it down a bit, but didn't get anywhere. No? He thinks if that's what his precious son wants, then that's what he should have, even if it bankrupts him. It's not that bad, is it? Oh, I don't know. I just know Philip is really worried. It's so unlike him. So what are you going to do? I was going to try talking to Gav myself. I mentioned it to Roy yesterday, and he was adamant. Do not touch with the barge pole. Why not? Other people's children. I'd never thought of myself as Gav's wicked stepmother, but apparently that's my role. No, that's rubbish. You're Philip's partner and you're concerned about him. Sounds like Gavin thinks his father's better off than he actually is. Well, maybe. And doesn't realise what he's asking is, well, a bit over the top. A bit. And is causing his dad unnecessary stress. And you feel compelled, as his partner, to point that out. So... You think I should speak to him? Well, that's what I'd do. I'm not sure that A, Gav cares that much about his dad's stress levels, and B, that he'd thank me for pointing it out. Well, you won't know unless you try. Yeah. And I can't just sit on my hands and do nothing. Anyway, here we are. The fancy dress shop is just around the corner. All we need now is somewhere to park. Have you decided what you're going as? Ah, that's got to be Superwoman, hasn't it? <laughs> OK. How about you? Well, we'll have to see what they've got. But I did wonder... Philip's got this thing about Jessica Rabbit. Jessica Rabbit? Philip? Hello? Oh. Hello, Lee. Are you looking for Helen? No, not really. Only she's gone out. Won't be back till later. I was looking for you, actually. Well, for Pat, really. I brought her some flowers. Mm. She's taken the boys swimming. Oh. Well, I wanted to say thank you to her and to you for inviting me over for Christmas. Mm. You're welcome. It was really nice. Well, these cows are pretty lively, aren't they? 
Cows? Oh, have I got that wrong? <laughs> Look, no udders. Oh, right. So these are bulls, are they? Oh, I wouldn't want to be with a bunch of bulls in a confined space like this. No? No, they're steers. Steers? Castrated males. Ah, oh, right. Give us less trouble. And don't bother the heifers. So is that something... Do you have to get a vet to do that? What? Castrate them. <laughs> you don't know much about farming, do you? <laughs> no, nothing at all, really. All you need to do is put a tight rubber ring around their testicles. Ouch! Well, they, they don't feel it. Not when they're little calves less than a week old. Really? Cuts off the blood supply and they just drop off. Ah! <laughs> Perfectly painless. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> oh, go on, go on. Get out the way, you. Go on. Um... <sighs> We didn't really get much of a chance to chat at Christmas. No. um, I'm sorry about all the drama with... um, Oh, goodness. (laughs) So embarrassing. It was just a silly misunderstanding. It was quite funny, actually. (laughs) You think? Well, anyway, I wanted to say... uh, Helen's told me everything. You know, about her ex-husband and what happened. Oh. And it's... I've got daughters... And I can imagine. So I wanted to reassure you that I would never, ever hurt Helen in any way. Right. Uh, Do you want to give me a hand with this straw? Oh, okay. Oh, that's no good. Mm, It's a bit big, isn't it? I look like Superwoman's dishevelled cousin. It's not that bad. It's like a sleeping bag. No. Well, maybe a bit. It's a shame they don't have more costumes. We should have come here sooner. No, I'm not into this. How about trying the carrot costume again? I'm not going as a carrot. It's quite a nice carrot costume. We could go as a double act. Carrots and peas. You're not serious (laughs) about that bee pod costume. (laughs) At least it fitted. Oh, Maybe I should give that Catwoman outfit a go. No, honestly, Helen, that costume is less Catwoman, more Grizabella with a serious case of mange. It wasn't that bad. You needed a rabies shot. Oh, I just wanted to go as a superhero. Well, I did spot a Banana Man costume. (laughs) Banana Man? With some rather snazzy yellow boots. Oh, we are seriously scraping the barrel, (laughs) aren't we? Oh, uh, maybe if I have another look around, I'll find something else. Well, before you do, can you zip me into this? Oh, very sparkly. Is it meant to be? Well, it hasn't got a label, but I thought if it fits, I could pile the makeup on, don a black wig and be Cher. There you go. <sighs> what do you reckon? Uh, definitely preferable to the pea pod, but uh, that's not saying much. Hoy! Phoebe, can I give you a lift? I'm all right, thanks. No, where are you, where are you heading? Back to the village. Oh, you're going to get soaked. Oh, come on, come on, hop in. No, really. No, we need to have a chat anyway. You can't keep avoiding me. I'm not avoiding you. So come on, in you get. Oh, well, OK. <laughs> no, it's still coming off in great love. It, it just needs a flick of the wrist. Right, show me again. Right. Stick the fork into the slice. Bit of wiggle to loosen the straw. I think that's the bit I'm not getting. Pull it out and shake it. OK, OK. I'll get it this time. Fork in, lift it up, wiggle, yeah, yank it out it. and shake. <laughs> <laughs> no, still all stuck together. Oh, it's not important. As long as you dot the lumps around, the cattle will soon spread it about. All right, let me have one more go. Right, fork in, wiggle, lift and <laughs> jiggle the fork. Yes! <laughs> there you go, you <laughs> see? Perfect. Oh, I can see how satisfying it must be. Good thing to do when you're feeling stressed. Uh, Lee, I, um, I feel I owe you an apology. Why do you say that? The business with Helen and her ex. I should have seen it coming. We were all taken in by him. He seemed so plausible. And I... Well... I failed to protect my daughter. First duty of a father, and... I can't forgive myself. Which is why I'm... Well... 
suspicious of other men coming into her life. I can understand that. So if I've seemed unfriendly... That's OK. I'm really sorry. I know how difficult it's been for Helen to trust anyone again. and I guess it's equally hard for the family. But you, well, you seem to make her happy. I hope so. So, um, <clears throat> well, let's finish this straw, shall we? And uh, then we'll go and have a nice cup of tea. <laughs> so, are you going to tell me what's happening with you and your compadres? I thought I'd have heard from all of you by now, but things seem to have gone worryingly silent, Phoebe. Oh, it's going fine. Mm-hmm. Steaming ahead. We've got the fourth piece of land we were hoping for, which is really great. Oh, that's excellent news, but that's not what I was asking. Well, and then the different areas all in cup, so it's like a corridor around the village. And have you made your peace with your co-conspirators? But there's still a... A few unresolved matters. So that's a no, then. Well, it's just with Christmas and everything. We haven't really had the opportunity to meet up. If there's one thing I've learnt over my many years in business, Phoebe, it's that success only comes through communication, working together and absolute trust. I know. I made a mistake. I'm sure we can put it behind us and move on. Well, once you've sorted that out, we should... uh get together. Yes, of course. Talk about where we go from here, because you made a great pitch, Phoebe. Very impressive. Thanks. And I wouldn't want to see you lose your zeal over some silly communication issues. No. I've been looking forward to working with all three of you. It'll make a change from the board. A bit of energy is just what we need. Thanks. And talking of the board... I understand there's a BL meeting later this week. On Thursday, yes. And you're going to take a decision about my granddad and his position on the board. Ah, indeed. Only, well, it was my fault, what he did. I don't think so. He was only trying to help me. He could see that I was floundering. I didn't really understand what I was getting into. And I don't think he should be punished. Really? Please, Don't throw him off the board. No, it's not down to me. But you get a say in the decision, surely. Yeah, what did I just say to you, Phoebe? What? That for a business to flourish, you need absolute trust. The BL board trusted Brown with confidential information, and what did he do? He betrayed our trust. But only to try and stop me doing the same thing. Yeah, well, two wrongs don't make a right. But you will put in a good word for him? I'll promise you anything. Now, where am I dropping you? Me? I thought that was your car outside. <laughs> what are you doing here? He's been helping me straw down the Anguses. Uh, what? I've learnt a new skill, straw tossing. He's very good at it. And we decided we'd earned a cup of tea and a <laughs> slice of Christmas cake. Very welcome it was too. But if I'm going to get the sheds closed up before dark, I'd better get on with it. Very nice talking to you, Lee. And you, Tony. Bye. <laughs> what on earth? I only dropped by to give those flowers to your mum, to say thank you for Christmas and everything. She wasn't around, but I found your dad outside, and he's taught me all about castrating bulls. Oh, really? <laughs> then we got talking about all sorts of other stuff. That was really nice, actually. Oh, that's good. Anyway, where have you been all this time? Oh, me and Kirsty went to sort out costumes for tomorrow. Costumes? For the fancy dress at the bull. Oh, is it fancy dress? Yeah, d- didn't you know? If I did, I forgot. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. No one will mind if you come in your ordinary clothes. But if you're going to dress up, I'll feel a bit stupid. Well, we don't have to go to the bull. We could go into Felpersham. There's an amazing new bar. Well, it'll be absolutely rammed, though. You know, I'm going to have to get a taxi home, and that'll be impossible on New Year's Eve. So... What would you like to do? We'll go to the bull. I'll sort out something to wear, don't worry. What are you wearing? I'm not telling you. Oh, go on. No. It's going to be a surprise. Ah, I'm not sure I like surprises. You'll like this one, I promise. Well, we messed things up last year. Do you remember? Ah, we managed to miss each other by minutes, didn't we? So this year, let's make sure we get it right. Dad? What's going on? The builders, in their wisdom, have decided this is an appropriate time to have a skip delivered. 
But they're not starting till next week, are they? No. So it's just going to be sitting there empty? A temptation for all the neighbours, Alistair. What? By the time the builders actually get to work on our extension, this skip will be full of old mattresses and whatever else the local residents want to dispose of. There's a tarpaulin in the garage we can put over the top. I very much doubt that that will inhibit determined fly tippers. Anyway, I was about to escape across to the bull for a bite of lunch. Care to join me? I was just going to go inside, grab a sandwich. Uh, Jazza is playing the bagpipes. Ah, Practising for piping the new year in. Exactly. The bull it is, then. So, uh, how did ghost stories go last night? Very well. Full house? Oh, yes. It's sold out now till the end of the week. Hmm? Elizabeth was muttering darkly about extending the run. Really? I had to put my foot down. Oh, you're not keen? It's been a thoroughly enjoyable experience, but I shall have had enough by Friday. And uh, what about tonight? You coming to the bull? I've had my arm twisted. By Jazza? Of course. Huh. And there's no point trying to avoid the New Year shenanigans, is there? When there'll be fireworks going off outside our front door at midnight. But Kenton Eccles was part of your USP. What? The bull was always the pub with the peacock. You're telling me that the only reason people came here was because there was a mangy old peacock wandering around outside? Not the only reason, of course. Yeah, well, I'm certainly not going to miss being woken up at the crack of dawn by his constant squawking. Did you get Alistair to look at him? What? When? To discover why he was being so noisy in the middle of winter. Those calls are usually part of the peacock's mating ritual. Yes, 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 I, I know all that. I mean, I lived with the wretched thing long enough. It could have been a simple explanation. Well, he had been around a heck of a long time, you know, Robert. I, I Probably suffering from the peacock equivalent of dementia. Afternoon. Ah, hello, Jim. Hello. hello. Um, uh, what can I get you? Just a half for me. Shires? Please. Alistair? Uh, yeah, same for me, thanks. Okay. Isn't it true, Alistair, that in captivity peacocks can live upwards of 40 years? Well, Alistair's not an expert, are you? Uh, no, no. Um, not remotely. No, I mean, Never had to treat a peacock, probably. No, no. Pigs, cows, I know what yeah. to do, but exotic birds, really uh, not my field, I'm afraid. Yeah. I hardly call echoes exotic. Um, can I get you anything else? Uh, yes, uh, I'll have a sandwich. Uh, ham and mustard on sourdough, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one for me as well, please. Okay. Uh, uh, and a packet of salt and vinegar. Ah, oh, I remember Joe Grundy sitting in the beer garden. <laughs> Feeding Eccles salt and vinegar crisps. Yeah, well, I don't suppose that did him much good. Uh, right, uh, anything else? Uh, no, I think that's all, thank you. Are you chaps coming this evening? Uh, we were just saying, weren't we, Dad? When you live on the green, there's no ignoring the new year. How about you, Robert? Ah, uh, yeah, Linda and I will be here. I'm in two minds about this fancy dress business. Oh, there. come on, Dad. Don't be a spoil sport. You just feel somewhat undignified at my advanced age. <laughs> We're dressing up. We're not that much younger than you. Uh, there will be forfeits for anybody not in uh, fancy dress. Oh, oh, it doesn't say that on the posters. Oh, it's in the small print. Um, but anyway, uh, there's your drinks. I'll just go and order your sandwiches. Cheers. Oh, wow. <laughs> Do you like it? <laughs> you look amazing. Scarlett Johansson, I better watch oh, out. <laughs> well, I was going to come as Superwoman, but the only costume they had was pretty rank. And, well, Kirsty said I look like a bin bag on legs. <laughs> Helen, you would look lovely even in a bin bag. <laughs> it was this Catwoman <laughs> costume, but yeah. This was the only one that really fitted. Oh, it was perfect in every way. But isn't Black Widow a bit, I don't know, sinister? No, well, yes, but in a good way. Because she used to be a Russian spy, yeah. but she had it in for Iron Man. But then she came to America and was recruited by S.H.I.E.L.D. Now she's one of the Avengers. OK. <laughs> Sorry, too much information. But she's basically a goodie. Oh, yeah? Yeah, well, I thought with a name like Black Widow, she went around, I don't know, eating people or something. <laughs> no, 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 she's definitely one of the good guys. <laughs> and uh, you're one of the good guys too? Sorry? Uh, it's not very imaginative, I know, turning up in my karate gi, but it was all I could think of at such short notice. Oh, I, I assumed you'd come as your hero, Bruce Lee. Oh, well, I could be, couldn't I? Yeah, why not? Yeah, Bruce Lee meets Black Widow, the ultimate power couple. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just get my coat. Goodness me, it's a madhouse out there. Yes, I retired in here for its relative peace and quiet. Uh, could I have a glass of water, do you think, Kent? 
Uh, there's a jug on the end of the bar. It would appear to be empty. Oh, uh, OK, just let me get the rest of these glasses out to the other bar. We're running short. You must be doing a roaring trade. It's absolutely packed. Yeah, I know. I just thank my lucky stars that Bella agreed to stay on for tonight. <laughs> We'd never have managed without her. Um, now, right, I'll be back in a minute. You're looking very red in the face, Robert. Yes, I've been dancing. Dancing? I foolishly ventured upstairs and got dragged onto the floor by Kate Madikani. Oh, dear. Not an easy woman to say no to. Oh, oh Alistair. Oh, so this is where you're hiding. It's marginally less ear-splitting than out in the main bar. How are you surviving the mayhem? Well, it's been a very jolly evening so far. Although I'm afraid we may have to carry Jazza home tonight. <laughs> He's extremely drunk already. <laughs> I think the chances of him serenading the new year on his bagpipes are vanishingly small. Whoa, is that what he's planning? Yes. Perhaps we should hide the bagpipes while we've got the chance. You're looking very dapper, Robert. Ah, yeah, thank you. I'm feeling rather sweaty. I don't know what inspired you to come as Jacob Reese mod. <laughs> what? I'm not... Whatever makes you think that? Top hat? Tailcoat? Isambard Kingdom Brunel, if oh, I'm not mistaken. Thank you. <laughs> I see. I'm sorry. Right, uh, you wanted a glass of water? Oh, yeah, please, Kenton. Take a rich mug, mate. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, pass me that jug. I'll fill that while I'm about it. So, is Linda Mrs. Bruno? No, she's Mary Annie. Who? Early collector of fossils. That's huh? why she's carrying the hammer. Ah, I thought that was for fending off unwanted advances. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that why you're on with that cane, Jim? What? Well, for... Sending off unwanted advances. No, 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 that's what he used to discipline his students, isn't it, Dad? <laughs> Don't you go blackening my name, Alistair. <laughs> I'm wearing my academic gown and mortarboard, but with the addition of the cane, to identify myself as Wackwood Squeers. Who? Oh, for heaven's sake, Kenton, have you never read Dickens? Uh, well, you got me there, Jim. You know, some people have really pushed the boat out with a fancy dress, haven't they? But it's like Mardi Gras out there. Have you seen Helen? Oh, yeah. The Black Widow. Ooh. She's come as a spider. Um, some kind of superhero, Robert. Oh, and uh, I think there's definitely something going on between her and a karate man. Ooh. Right, uh, now, does anyone want another drink while I'm here? Uh, are you ready for a stiffler, Robert? Yeah, I wouldn't say no. Alistair? No, no, I'll wait a while, thanks. A couple of double scotches then, please, Captain. Uh, I uh-huh. should go a bit easy if I were you, Dad. It's still nearly two hours to get through till midnight. Well, it's not as if I have to get up in the morning. I can sleep in and be fine for tomorrow night's performance. Unless the wretched builder decides to make another delivery. What exactly is this builder going to be doing? We're having a small extension built on the back of the house. So we can escape from your piano playing. <laughs> Very funny, Alistair. I don't know why you're so rude about my piano playing. I heard you played quite beautifully at Joe Grundy's memorial. You're at the wake, you mean? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Robert. Nice to know somebody appreciates my talents. Oh, you have legions of fans, Jim. I've been hearing all evening about your ghost stories in the attic. Really? Yes, everybody's singing your praises. Any chance you could give me a ticket? Sorry, you're too late. Completely sold out. (laughs) Talking of memorials... What? I was thinking about Eccles. Well, don't. You think we should hold a wake for Eccles? No, absolutely not. What you ought to do is commission some kind of monument. Perhaps a statue in the garden. Eccles displaying in all his glory. That is by far the worst idea I have heard all day. Oh, fresh air. Oh, that feels nice. You're not too cold? No. No, it's lovely. Oh, it's quite hot being dressed from head to toe in black leather. (laughs) Or whatever synthetic substance this costume is made from. Oh, I bet my face is like a beetroot, isn't it? A little bit on the pink side, perhaps, but still beautiful. Oh, flatterer. (laughs) Oh, this is my idea of heaven. Spending the new year with Black Widow. Oh, I shall have to dress like this more often. <laughs> uh, talking to superheroes. Oh, no, 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 not again. Sorry, sorry. I know I go on about it, but just wanted to say I've bought Henry a Lego Spider-Man for his birthday. Aww. It's only small, but that'd be all right, do you think? Yeah, of course it will. I love it, Lee. Well, he's really pleased you're coming to his birthday tea on Thursday. Oh, is he? Oh, good. <sighs> You're getting cold. No. <laughs> yes, no. you are. You were shivering. <laughs> no. I'm fine. Ugh, although it's pretty nippy out here. Well, do you want to go back in? Um, 
Do you? But I was just wondering if you mightn't go somewhere a bit quieter. Well, it's quite noisy in there, isn't mm. it? Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> but you wouldn't want to miss out on the chimes of midnight. Well, we can listen to those anywhere. Mm, and the fireworks and everything? No, not really a great fan of fireworks. Oh. C- can we maybe go back to your place? Right, well, the last few minutes of the old year are ticking by, ladies and gents. So, make sure your glasses are charged and you are ready to welcome the year 2020! Another small one, Jim. Uh, actually, I won't, thank you, Robert. But your glass is empty. I think I might head off home. What now? There's only a couple of minutes to go. Uh, I'm actually feeling a little queasy. Oh, shall I get you a glass of water? Uh, no, no, I'm fine, really. Oh, oh, oh dear... It's awfully stuffy in here. Isn't Not it? long now. Uh, I could really do with a breath of fresh air. Right, everybody, get ready for the countdown. Oh dear, I think I'm going to be sick. Dad, uh, excuse me, excuse me, please. And ten, ten nine, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four. Oh dear me. Is that it? I sincerely hope so. I haven't bothered you like that since. I can't remember when. I told you to go easy on the scotch. I could assure you, Alistair, my consumption of alcohol this evening has been in no way excessive. He only had what I had. Uh-huh. I think perhaps I've eaten something that's disagreed with me. But you're all right now? I think so. Well, come on, let's get you home. Up you get. Oh. Oh, no. I think I'm going to be sick again. Dad? You awake? Hmm? How are you feeling? I've been better. But you stopped throwing up? Yes. Have you managed to drink some water? You must be horribly dehydrated. Here. Uh, I'm perfectly capable of holding my own water glass, Alistair. All right, all right. Have a little sip, at least. Don't nag me. I'm just a bit concerned. Do you think I should give Elizabeth a call? What for? Warn her that you're probably not going to be able to do the show tonight. No, no, no. I shall be right as rain by this evening. Wouldn't bank on it. There's no need to go spreading alarm and despondency. But if you can't do it... Alistair! All right. I'll leave it for an hour or two. Yeah, and Hilary Noakes said as much. Well, since when did you care about Hilary Noakes' opinion? Well, it weren't just her. There were loads of people last night said how much they'd miss him. Uh, Any more for the rubbish? Yeah, and asked if we were planning some sort of tribute. Tribute? To Eccles? Yeah. What's wrong with that? (sighs) Hey, you've missed a bit. Hmm? There's party poppers all over them horse brasses. Look, what did that bird ever achieve except getting under people's feet and shattering the peace of the early morning with his endless squawking? Well, just because you took against him. With good reason. You shouldn't underestimate how popular he was with the punters. Now, the bull just won't be the same without him. Oh, listen to yourself. You're talking utter nonsense. Oh, really? Yes, really. Hmm. So you don't think we should start a collection? What for? A memorial in the garden. No way, no. I have no wish to be reminded of that wretched creature every time that I go out the back door. Well, and someone else said it'd be nice if we opened a book of condolence. (laughs) Oh, don't be ridiculous. Which I think is a lovely idea. You're not serious. You just don't get it, do you? How is he? No better. Is he still throwing up? No, that stopped, thank goodness, but he's very weak and tired. Oh, dear. Tried to get out of bed, but he just came over all dizzy. And at his age, it takes a while to get over things. I know. There's no way he's going to be up and about by this evening. Well, I had a word with Russ. Oh, he could do it, couldn't he? Well, Russ said that if anyone's going to stand in for Jim, it should be Robert. Robert? Well, it makes sense. I mean, he was the director. He went through the stories dozens of times with Jim, so he's very familiar with the text. He knows where all the dramatic moments are. But Robert's not really a performer, is he? 
I mean, it's not as if there are lines to learn. I mean, all he has to do is sit there and read aloud from the book. Have you asked him? I phoned Ambridge Hall, but he was out. Linda said he'd be back in half an hour. Although she was dubious about him doing it. Was she? He even volunteered to do it herself. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She's not one for subtlety, is she, Linda? Although she was OK in the Canterbury Tales last year. Yeah, but do you remember the year before? The Wicked Fairy. Oh. <laughs> Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> don't remind me. I don't think we should risk letting her loose on the ghost stories. <laughs> um, could I just say hello to Jim, do you think? Oh, yeah, of course. If he's awake, Good. come on through. Thanks. Dad? Uh, Elizabeth's here to see you. Hello, Jim. Oh, don't worry. I shall be there this evening, even if it kills me. No, no, don't even think about it. You just concentrate on getting better. Yes, but the show... No, we're going to get Robert to do it tonight. Robert? Please tell me you're joking. And you... Agree. Elizabeth said she'd come over. No, no. And we could run through no, the stories Lindy. together. No way. So I've dug out your copy, although you practically know the stories by heart, don't you? <laughs> All those people staring at me, my mind would go completely blank. But Robert, you'd have the book in front of you. I'd lose my place. Oh. Inevitably. I, I'd just end up hopelessly flicking through the pages. Well, I did suggest to Elizabeth that you might be a little nervous of taking it on. A so... little nervous? I'd make a complete hash of it, as you well know, Lindy. Uh, I've always been a behind-the-scenes kind of person, because I know I'd simply go to pieces in front of an audience. Mm. I do think you underestimate yourself. No, I don't. But uh, I knew you'd react like this. Which is why... I suggested to Elizabeth that I should do it. Oh, well, yes, of course you should. It's obvious. You know the stories just as well as I do, and you're a seasoned performer. Mm. Well, I did offer my services to Elizabeth, but she was not keen. Why ever not? It's the perfect solution. She seemed to think that your voice had a similar depth and resonance to Jim's. No, it doesn't. Not remotely. Whereas my voice, being of a higher register would not have the same impact. Hm. I rather got the impression that she felt women can't tell ghost stories. What nonsense. I know. Ah, that'll be her now. But you'd be perfect, Lindy. And I could help you rehearse the stories. Elizabeth, do come in. Is Robert uh, back? Yes, yes, and I'll explain the situation to him. Come on through. Hello, Robert. Morning, Elizabeth. Well, I just dropped into Greenacres to see if Jim had recovered at all, but I'm afraid he's quite poorly still. Oh, dear. So, we're going to have to manage without him tonight, and the general consensus is that you are best placed to take over. No, no, that is not the general consensus. I don't agree at all. In fact, I'm absolutely the last person you should choose. Why do you say that? It, 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 even just... Thinking about it's causing me to hyperventilate. Everyone gets nervous, Robert. Goodness me, I go into meltdown whenever I have to speak in public. No, 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 you don't understand. But it's, it's a bit like doing a parachute jump. It's absolutely terrifying to think about. But as soon as you jump, uh, as soon as you walk on that stage, the adrenaline takes over and you're flying. No, I would be wetting myself. And the point is... Linda can do it. Oh, yeah, she's very she's kindly offered. She's sat on a few of the rehearsals. She could get up to speed with the stories in no time. In fact, many of the best bits were her suggestion. I just feel that, um... Well, it's the done thing, isn't it, that the director steps in. I mean, you're more familiar than anyone with the shape and the rhythm of the stories. And you'd give it that sort of subtlety that it requires. Why don't you just give it a try? Uh, read me the opening of The Monkey's Paw. What? Now? I wouldn't mind betting that by the time you're halfway down the page, your nerves will have evaporated. <laughs> Lindy. Elizabeth's right. <sighs> you should at least give it a go. And as you say, I'm an experienced director, so I'll be on hand. Well, that's right. If anyone can whip you into shape, it's Linda. <sighs> I wouldn't have put it quite like that, but yes. Robert, I am your best hope. No. Let me find a place for you. There you are. I can't do this. Yes, you can. Now, nice deep breath. <laughs> and off you go. 
without the night was cat and bowl, wet and cold. But in the small parlour of Liburnum Le... Le... Villa, the blinds were drawn. Drawn, sorry. Keep going. And the fire burned brightly. Keep going. Father and son were at chest. Chest, sorry. Hark at the wind. Where have you been? Oh, I, I just had to pop out. Huh? What for? I saw Harrison arrive home, and I want to have a word with him. Harrison? Why? Yeah, because I want a proper investigation into Eccles' death. Oh, for heaven's sake. It was an accident. Well, you know that, do you? Yes, he was hit by a car. And do you also know that peacocks are like swans? Killing one and not reporting it is actually a crime. Oh, come on. No, it's true. But, well, who told you that? Harrison? You don't believe me? It's... He's pulling your leg. No, I've made up my mind, Kenton. I'm not going to rest until I have tracked down the monster that killed our peacock. It was an accident. An innocent person hitting him accidentally would not have just driven away, leaving him dying all on his own. No, it was definitely intentional. No, it wasn't. How do you know? Because it was me. Aha! And I did not leave him. I know. What? I've known all along. How did you... Oh, it was Alistair, wasn't it? What? Oh, I told him to keep his mouth nah, shut. I don't try putting the blame on Alistair. I found a great clump of feathers and stuff stuck to the wheel of your car. So you mean... Do you mean you've known all this time? Ah, I was just waiting to see how long it would take you to fess up. So all that stuff about swans and police inquiries and books of condolence... Mm -hmm. That was all garbage. And finally, finally... We get the truth. <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose, love. Oh, really? No, of course I didn't. <sighs> well, I hope at least you've learned from this experience. What? That when you murder something in cold blood, it's as well to dispose of the evidence. You never did do anything properly. I've brought you the book. Oh, oh thank you so much. I was searching high and low for that. Yeah, Dad must have taken it home with him on Monday. Mm. What on earth? Linda. What? Linda's going to do the show. You're kidding. Unfortunately not. But you said Robert was doing it. Well, he couldn't hack it. The man's a bundle of nerves. Oh. Linda and I did our best this afternoon to instill some confidence into him, but it was a lost cause. Yeah, but Linda? Well, I think she knew from the word go that Robert wasn't up to it. She just went along with it so that by the time we finally gave up on him, there'd be no chance of me finding anyone else. I'd have to let her do it. And did you rehearse at all? Briefly. And how was she? Don't ask. Ah, oh, Alistair. Linda, I, I brought the book. Oh, thank you so much. I was thinking I would have to go on clutching Robert's tatio director's huh. copy. Well, um, are you ready for this, Linda? Oh, well, as I'll ever be. Right, well, it's half past. We'd better make a start. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. What's going on? Is that Dad? Ah, they did. Jim! What are you doing here? The show. But how did you get here? Taxi. You don't have to do this, Jim. Uh, you still look terribly pale. I am primed to go on as your understudy. You? But I thought Robert was going to do it. Well, yes, but... And that was bad enough. His nerves got the better of him. Well, thank goodness I'm here. Give me the book. Uh, could somebody cue lights and sound effects? Are you sure about this, Dad? Absolutely. Oh, Without, the night was cold and wet, but in the small parlour of Laburnum Villa, the blinds were drawn and the fire burned brightly. Morning, Tony. Oh, morning, Brian. Your Angus's are looking good. Yes, doing all right, aren't they? What brings you here? I'm under orders from Jenny. We're running short of fresh veg, apparently, so I've been dispatched to pick up supplies. Not much choice in the shop, I'm afraid. I've got some leeks and a cabbage. That should see us through. Anyway, Happy New Year. Have you? Good Christmas? Uh, yeah, it was fine. Everyone behaved. 
No major bust-ups. How about you? Uh, yes, it, it was uh, nice, <laughs> on the whole. Despite the attentions of Mrs. Horville? Oh, Lord, you, who told you about that? Oh, word gets about. I didn't see you Tuesday. Tuesday? New Year's Eve at the ball. Oh, no, we were babysitting. Ah. We went out last night instead, Pat and I, to this thing at Lower Loxley. <laughs> Ghost stories in the attic. Oh, it went ahead, did it? I was told Jim Lloyd had gone down with food poisoning. Yes, we were told Linda was going to do it. Oh, dear. Which was very disappointing, but in the nick of time, Jim turned up. Looking, I have to say, like a ghost himself. <laughs> Dreadfully pale and haggard, but, but he was ever so good. Uh, anyway, that's Christmas and New Year all done, thank yeah. heavens. It's back to work now. Oh, with a vengeance. I've got a BL board meeting this afternoon. Yes, I... Uh, I did hear about your big bust-up. Yeah, well, I'm not looking forward to that one bit. Kirsty, Happy New Year. And you? Have a good one, did you? Oh, yeah, really nice, thanks, Gav. Got dizzy, drunk and sang Old Lang Syne. <laughs> All of that. And then fireworks on the village green. Ah, sounds ace. Yeah, it was good fun. Really good. Dad was okay next day? Yeah, he was in a better state than me. He doesn't really do hangovers, does he? Everyone else got a sore head, mouth like an armpit, while he's <laughs> bouncing around like a kid who's OD'd on sugar. <laughs> um, Gav, are you going to be over this way at all any time soon? Why? I wondered if we could meet up. You want me to drop by the house? Uh, no, I wanted to have a word in private, actually. What, just you and me? Yeah. Oh, Kirsty, what would people say? <laughs> yeah. You know, villages are like for gossip. Well, we'll have to risk that. So, are you going to be around at all? Yeah, I should be over your way later on this afternoon. Really? Yeah, I told Dad I'd have a look at this uh, playground that needs sorting. What time? About four. OK. I'll meet you there. Hello, you. Hi. Am I allowed to kiss you? Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, it's a bit public out there. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> Anyway, after New Year's Eve, I think we're the talk of the town. And you're all right with that? <laughs> of course I am, <laughs> silly question. So, no regrets? Uh, quite the opposite, actually. Can't wait for the next time. <sighs> Me neither. I missed you so much yesterday. I couldn't stop thinking about... You know, waking up, finding you there beside me. <laughs> Etc. <laughs> Etc. <laughs> so, how were your girls? Oh, yeah, it was a nice day, all in all. All in all? Oh, things started off well, but then I suggested we play some video game, and before I knew it, the whole thing had descended into chaos. You know, hair pulling, tears, the oh, lot. Oh, Lee, <laughs> you really should learn to control your competitiveness. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't bear losing. Oh, you know, it is one minute they're my sweet children, and then the next... Yeah, the switch flips. And they're these monsters that look like my children, but I swear they're not. Yeah, I know how you feel. No, oh, nothing a run around outside can't solve, but... Oh, I'm knackered now. Oh, dear. Now you've got my two to deal with. Ah, a piece of cake by comparison. Is Henry having a good birthday? Yeah, yeah, so far. I took them ice skating this morning, so hopefully they won't be too boisterous. Right, come on then. Let's go inside. Hope he likes my present. Oh, he will, because you bought it. Oh, my goodness. Hope I can live up to expectations. What are you doing here, Phoebe? Waiting for you. So, how did it go? What? The BL board meeting. Oh. That is where you've been, isn't it? Yes. And? I hope I never have to go through anything like that again. They've thrown you off? No, no, they've agreed that I can continue as a board member. Oh, thank goodness for that. Well, it was touch and go. I was given an embarrassing dressing down by Martin Gibson. Obviously relishing the opportunity to put me in my place. And he made it quite clear this was a final warning. If I ever put a foot wrong in future, that will be it. I am so sorry, Grandad. Yeah, well, what the hell did you think you were doing? Going begging Justin Elliott to intervene on my behalf. I didn't go begging. Well, not what he said. He gave me a lift in his car, that's all. He wanted to talk about the rewilding thing. And I felt so bad about having dropped you in it. So you thought you'd make things worse? I didn't mean to, Grandad. I, I was trying to help. Oh, come on, come on, Phoebe. 
It's not the end of the world. Feels like it. We'll survive. Come on, let's go inside and have a cup of tea. <laughs> I dare say there's a bit of your granny's Christmas cake left. Oh, wow, look at that. It's Hogwarts Castle. Well, not all of Hogwarts Castle. I couldn't afford the whole thing. This is the clock tower. It's just with Henry's birthday being so soon after Christmas, people tend to only give him one present. So I like to save something special for today. Oh, my little Spider-Man's going to get lost in this sea of Lego. <laughs> but I love Spider-Man. He's my favourite superhero. Mine too. Tea'll be ready in a minute, Henry. Oh, we could do a little bit, couldn't we? Well, just a teeny bit. Oh, go on then. <sighs> now, what are these grey bits? Those are the roof. So we don't want those yet? I'm looking for the window bits, these yellow ones. OK, so yellow bits with curves. Here's one. We were having a discussion, weren't we, Henry, about whether Harry Potter counts as a superhero? Ah, good question. What did you decide? Of course he is. Well, he does have a lot of magic powers, doesn't he? He can fly. And he can be invisible. Oh, look, here's another window bit. What are you all doing up here? Ah, Henry was just letting me help with his amazing Hogwarts oh. castle. Well, your tea's ready, darling. On the table. Come on then, birthday boy. <laughs> we better get down there before Jack eats all the pizza. <laughs> Coming. All right? Yeah, having a great time. Yeah, so's Henry. Well, he's a great kid. Lee, I'm so happy you're here. But we're here. You know, together. <laughs> it just feels so right. It's funny to think I was actually here last year, on Henry's birthday. Oh. You know, sometimes I worry I've wasted so much time. Hey, don't say that. It wasn't meant to be then, but it is now. No, I know. I just don't want to waste any more. We won't. Good. Because I love you. And I, I know I didn't say it before, but I felt it then, and... I feel it now. So neither of them is speaking to you? I went round to see Pip on Friday, but she didn't want to talk about it. Oh. Now, how big a slice of cake? Like that? Yeah, that's fine. I know you mud Rex, but he hasn't got back to me. That's a bit childish. I can understand it. Well, you won't make that mistake again. But we're committed now. We've signed away our autonomy. And it's my fault. Oh, it's not that bad. But it is, Grandad. That agreement gives BL a say in every decision we make. But look at it this way, Phoebe. If you hadn't taken up BL's offer, the project wouldn't have got off the ground. You wouldn't have got Peggy's money. I know, I know. And you know what you're dealing with now? You've learned it the hard way, but now you know. With hard-headed businesses like BL, you have to keep your wits about you when you scrutinise everything. I just... I can't do it on my own, Grandad. Oh, Pip and Rex will come round. I'm not so sure. They will. They're, they've invested far too much in this project to give up on it now. And even if they did want out, you're not going to give up, are you? I don't know what I'm going to do. You're going to grit your teeth and carry on. That's how you got into Oxford, isn't it? Didn't believe any of the naysayers who said you couldn't do it. You knuckled down and got on with it. And you can do it again. I know you can. Now, come on, eat your cake. Hi, Gav. Oh, hi. Uh, um, hang on a sec. Just let me get these um, measurements done. Right, that's about 15 metres. Oh, it's really good of you and your dad to offer to fix this. Yeah, I could do without at the moment. Mine's got a lot of other work on. That's uh, 17.5, so... Yeah, 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 that'll do for now. Right, I can order in the membrane. So, what is so hush hush you couldn't tell me over the phone? It's about your wedding. My wedding? You and Kelly. What's that got to do with you? Well, um... None of my business, I get that. But I'm... I'm worried about your dad. Why? The thing is, Gavin... You saw him Friday. He's absolutely thrilled me and Kelly are tying the knot. Yes, yes, he is. But the whole barley thing... Uh, you don't approve. Well, it's just the cost of it. Your dad's not going to say anything, but he's not made of money. Excuse me? And he's been worrying himself what sick about it. do you know it? about the state of my dad's finances? Well... Or how the business is doing, come to that? Nothing, really. It's only that I don't like yeah, seeing... Nothing? Thought so? It's just I can see how stressed he is. 
He's not been sleeping well, and that's really unlike him. He went him. through all this last week, and he was perfectly happy to pay for it. He can't bear saying no to you. Oh, what you mean is he doesn't like saying no to you. No, no. Well, yes, he hates saying no to anyone, which is why he got lumbered with repairing this playground. But the point is, Gav, £20,000? If you're not allowed to push the boat out on your wedding day, when are you? But does it have to be on a beach in Bali? I mean, you could do something simpler in this country. It's our wedding, our choice. Look, I don't know if you know this, but I was supposed to be getting married a few years ago, and... Um... And you were jilted at the altar. Yeah. And, in retrospect, I can see that I was taken in. I let myself be seduced into the whole fairy tale wedding experience, and I failed to notice that my fiancé was getting cold feet. Well, that's not going to happen to me. No, 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 I wasn't suggesting that... All I'm saying is it it made me realise how unimportant it is. All that stuff, the clothes, the flowers, the the horse-drawn carriage, the fancy menu, it's just a distraction. It's my wedding, Kirsty. And Kelly and I have been together long enough to know what's right for us. And what we want, the two of us, is a beach in Bali. But you can't expect your dad to pay for it all. So you think I'm sponging off it? Uh, That's not what I'm saying. And what are you doing? That's what I'd like to know. What? Hmm? As far as I can see... You're a woman pushing 40 who works part-time cleaning other people's sweat off gym machines and the other half your time paddling about in streams with a bunch of crusties. You've got no right to say... If anyone's sponging off him, let's face it, it's you. That is not true. That way you shacked up with him, is it? So him as a convenient sugar daddy, keep you in a posh house with a nice garden. How could you think such a thing? Kelly and I are getting married and my dad has agreed to cough up the necessary, so do me a favour, Kirsty, and butt out. Watch where you're putting your feet. Oh, jazz are. And shut that door. Uh, I've told you before, the gap under the door is I perfectly know. big enough for Webster to squeeze through. I'm watching, I don't you fret. But you know what will happen. Your phone will go, you'll get distracted, and she'll make a break for it. And we'll spend the rest of the afternoon on a spider hunt. Oh, let her have a wee run about. She's going to be stuck in a tank most of next week when the builders are here. What are you doing? One of the bulbs has gone in the ceiling light. Oh, I didn't even notice. Jazza! What? You see what I mean? Oh, come here, Webster. Another five seconds, she'd have been under that door and terrorising the neighbourhood. Time for you to go back in your tank, young lady. Yeah, best place for her. Let me do that to you. What? You don't want to go climbing that ladder. It's only a couple of steps, for heaven's sake. Aye, but we don't want you coming out all dizzy again. Oh, for heaven's sake. You're as bad as Alistair. I am perfectly fine. You've got a shorty day of the night, remember? I'm well aware of that. You wouldn't want Linda Snell to have to step in. Oh, don't. And make a dog's breakfast to your lovely show just because you fell off a ladder. Perish the thought. She's been nosing around this production since it began. So give me the light bulb. Come on. What a fuss you do make. Anyone would think I was a death's door. Oh, you weren't far off Tuesday night. I had a mild stomach upset, that's all. <laughs> it's no way I call mild. Uh, Tracy? What? Well, where are you going? To find a cupper. I'm on my break. So, who's on reception? Ginny. Oh, well, she's here, is she? Why wouldn't she be? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I just can't keep track at the moment. I mean, so many people have swapped shifts and... Um... Has Ginny made her peace with Katerina? Oh, don't ask me. i got better things to do than get involved in their daft squabbles. All over some stupid card game. Oh, they're not still at it. Last I heard, Ginny was down 48 quid. But I've warned them once already this week. Nobody takes any notice of you. Oh, great. It'll blow over. Don't worry. Mm, easy for you to say. Hey, how about you come to Ghost Stories in the Attic with me to take your mind off it? Um, no, no thanks. Oh, go on. You're the fifth person I've asked. Oh, charming. How come you got a spare? Those tickets are like gold dust. It's supposed to be quite good, isn't it? I thought you'd had your fill of the supernatural. Oh, I have. But Roman got tickets and now he can't come. Got a late booking, so it's just me on me Todd. Afternoon. Ah, oh, Oliver. Afternoon. Would you like to go and see Ghosts in the Attic at Lower Loxley tonight? Uh, I think it's so loud, isn't it? I got a spare ticket. Ah. You asking me to come with you? That's the general idea, yeah. Well, in that case, thank you very much. I'd love to. Everyone's been saying how good it is. Great. 
Drinks on you, though, because I bought the ticket. And you can pick me up and all. What on earth? Is that coming from the staff room? It sounds like it. Oh, Roy, I was just coming to find you. There's a fight broken out in there. Quick! <laughs> Morning, Harrison. Oh, hello. Nice to see the sun, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It uh, makes a change. Are you, uh, y- you okay? Never better. Oh, good. It was just a stomach bug, that's all. A 24 hour thing. Oh, you've been ill, have you? Oh, I assume since you were asking after my health. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. Um, yeah, Fallon did mention it. Sorry, I've. Uh, I've been dealing with a nasty pile up on the ring road. My mind is elsewhere. Nothing too serious, I hope? No fatalities, but one of the drivers had to be cut from the wreckage. Oh, dear. Yeah, it doesn't happen too often, but it's always a bit, uh, you know. So I thought I'd stop off at home for a quiet sandwich and a cup of tea. Good idea. Anyway, I'm glad you're better. Yeah, tummy bug, you say? Yes, very nearly had to cry off from the show on Wednesday night. Ah, the ghost stories. We saw it on Monday, Fallon and I. It was great. You enjoyed it? Oh, very much. Good. Well, it's the last performance tonight, and uh, I dare say we shall be having a bit of a celebration in the ball afterwards. Oh. So, if you care to join us... Right. Well, um, thanks. I simply cannot believe this is going on under my nose. But, uh, but you knew the card games had started up again. I turned a blind eye to that. I realised I'd overacted somewhat, trying to ban them all together. Well, fingers crossed, that's the last of it. But you knew it was happening all along. Oh, right. I know, I know. And this fracas this afternoon. Well, I, I think there was an accusation of cheating. It is completely unacceptable, Roy, to have fights breaking out in the staff room. Yeah, of course it is. But I can't understand why you didn't come to see me sooner. I thought I could handle it. So what action did you take? Well, I issued verbal warnings to the people I knew to be involved. I mean, but the trouble is, people simply pretend they're playing for matchsticks. Well, we know who was involved this afternoon. Yes. So written warnings to all of them. One more breach of the rules and they'll face instant dismissal without a reference. <laughs> We'd lose half the kitchen staff. Well, it's down to them, isn't it? If they value their jobs, they'll stick by the rules. Uh, yes, yes, I know. It's just... <sighs> Well, trying to dictate what they do in their leisure time, I worry what it's going to do to staff morale. Roy, if colleagues are falling out and there are fisticuffs in the staff room, it sounds as if staff morale is already at rock bottom. Yes, things have been a bit, um, well, rocky lately. So we need to think what we can do to improve matters. Any ideas? Uh, not off the top of my head, no. Well, give it some thought, and I'll do the same. Oh, have you... Oh, sorry, I didn't realise you were busy. It's all right, Kirsty, we're finished. I'm just leaving. Oh, OK. <sighs> what was all that about? Oh, that fight in the staff room. Oh. Never seen Oliver quite so angry. I've just had my knuckles severely wrapped. But it wasn't your fault. No, but he thinks I should have come down harder on the gambling culprits when I first found out. Oh, you've had a lot on. <sighs> just a bit. <laughs> Uh, Things haven't been exactly restful at home. Phoebe's still in the doldrums. Yeah. Oh, honestly, Kirsty, wish you were still living at Willow Farm. Oh, sorry. You know about the rewilding debacle? Oh, of course, yeah. Phoebe came round for some advice last week. Mm, Did she? Yeah. I was in the middle of cooking dinner for Gav, so I'm afraid that maybe I didn't give her my full attention. Well, it'll sort itself out in time. It's just... You know, at the moment, she's, um... Well, you know. Mm. Anyway, what did you want to see me about? Uh, Let me guess. Gavin? Afraid so. What's he done now? It's my fault. You told me not to get involved. Oh, dear. I just thought... Maybe he simply doesn't realise how much anxiety he's causing his dad. Because, you know, Philip, he's always so gung-ho about everything. In public, anyway. I mean, Gavin told him about the wedding. Philip was outwardly, you know, over the moon, not a care in the world. It was only afterwards. So, and you've spoken to Gavin? And he was absolutely horrible. Really nasty. Why? What did he say? Turned the tables on me. 
Said I was the one sponging off Philip. What? Virtually accused me of being a gold digger. Only interested in Philip for what I could get out of him. Oh, you're kidding. It was awful, Roy. Just awful. I always suspect that he didn't really like me. But to accuse me of that... And I can't say anything to Philip. Why not? Well, because... Because... Well, it's like you said, other people's children. I shouldn't have got involved. It's my own stupid fault. No, 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 come on. There is no excuse for him saying things like that to you. Even if that's what he thinks, he should at least show a bit of respect for his dad, who quite obviously loves you to bits. And I love him. And that's why I can't say anything. I know how much it'd hurt him. But you can't keep this to yourself. I've got to. No, no, no. I mean, you're obviously upset. And if Philip hasn't noticed already, well, he's going to. Well, he's a bit preoccupied at the moment. Well, you've got to talk to him, Kirsty. You've got to let him know. Well done. Did you enjoy it? Yes, indeed, very much. Although I suspect I'm going to have quite a bruise on my arm when Tracy touched me. Oh, it was <laughs> just that bit in the Lost Hearts where he sees the ghostly children and the lad raises his arms. Oh, and the moon was shining through his fingernails. Oh. That's dead creepy, that bit. Was that the part that had you flinging your arms around Christine? Really? No, I did not. I heard about that. So it was you, Jazzer. I'm telling you, it was one of the old fellas for the laurels. Our Susan told me that Cecil Jackson told her that they had to give whoever it was, Jazzer, smell insults to bring them round. Apparently, Christine was only seconds away from giving mouth to mouth. Oh, enough of that. Come on, admit it. You were scared witless. Oh, I wouldn't blame you, Jazzer. My heart was in my mouth half the time. Rather knock spots off Roman's comedy dinner nights, didn't it? Yeah. Real shame he missed seeing it. He could have learned a thing or two. Anyway, uh, you must let me buy you a drink, Jim. That's very kind of you. Scotch, is it? You've got three lined up already. Lucky me. You want to go easy, Prof. Some of the other day you were heaving your guts up. Am I hearing right? Jasmine McCreary advising me to moderate my drinking. <laughs> I'm only saying. Pots and kettles spring to mind. And I would love another Scotch. Thank you, Oliver. My pleasure. Kenton, when you're ready. Ah, oh, Harrison. Were you at Jim's show as well? Not tonight, no. We saw it on Monday. Are you all right now? What? You were a bit upset this morning. Was that? An accident on the ring road. Oh, the RTA. No, no, I'm, I'm fine. I'd quite forgotten about that. I just wanted a word with uh, Jazza, actually. Oh, dear. What have you been up to now, Jazza? <laughs> Wasn't it me, officer? Don't worry. It's nothing serious. I just wanted to... Um... Could we go somewhere a bit quieter, do you think? If you insist. Hey, don't admit to nothing without a solicitor present. <laughs> All right, pal. What's going on? Um, I had a call this morning from a mate of mine in the force, and I don't quite know what to do. <laughs> so why are you asking me? It's about Jason. <sighs> They've arrested him at last. Um, That's great. <laughs> He's gone doing all right. No, no, I, I'm I'm sorry, Jazza. It's um, it's not that. Is it no about time they did? The nursing home where he was a resident were helping with inquiries, but um, my mate got a call from him yesterday to tell us that he died on Boxing Day. Did? It shouldn't have come as a surprise. He was well into his 90s. So, after all that, that scunner got away with it? Everything he'd done? Oh, Jazza, I know this is difficult to hear. I hope his death was slow and painful. I don't have any details. Um, I wasn't sure whether you'd already heard, but I, I, I knew you'd want to know. Uh, I'm glad you told me. It's just, just a shame it's no better news. I'm sorry, mate. I know this has been weighing on your mind and on your friend's mind. Just when I thought we were through the worst. I don't know how I'm going to find the words to break it to him, but we oh, has got to know. I just wish there was a better ending to it all. 